Hi, I'm Rowan. Hi, I'm Zach. And you're watching episode 3.18 of In The Zone. Today we're going to be discussing the Twilight Zone episode, Dead Man's Shoes. We're going to spoil the whole thing, so you have been warned. We start in an alley. There is some great music. I love this, like, city stock music that the Twilight Zone always throws at us. There's this tough gangster guy who's, like, you know, driving this car. doesn't look very tough. He sort of looks like, like, my elbow is too big for car. I don't know. It's a very strange appearance. And he's, like, he's very nervous. Yes, he tells him to dump the body. He says, "Dump him." And then there's a homeless man up, like on like a fire escape or something, and with his with his alcohol. Oh yeah, the alcohol. <laughs> there's something about the guy's acting in this scene that's really weird. Like he doesn't, he looks like an actor who they put like some like a mild layer of dirt on his face, and he's like, "I'm cold." There's something about him is very unconvincing as a homeless man in this scene. It's just weird. And then he goes to the trash to get some food, and then he sees the shoes of the dead man. Much like the title. He feels the dude's pulse, you know, as you do. Steals his shoes. You don't want to steal shoes off a guy who's just out cold. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. And then, you know, Serling is in... You know what? Did you recognize the set that Serling was standing on? Yes. Really? From what? Uh, Nervous Man in a Four Dollar Room. No, that was indoors the whole time. He was standing out nice and I was close. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this was a set in the beginning of A Passage for Trumpet. Oh, the guys that was my rating. next yes. Yeah, I bet it was. And so, yeah, we fade to black. We come up, the guy's walking around wearing the shoes. So he talks to, uh, talks to his homeless guy friend, you know. But then Nate, he's like, hey, come on, stay in dark to me. But then Nate wants to leave. He, like, has somewhere to go. And then uh, there is one of the worst characters I've ever seen. Yes. This comic relief, British, weird, poetic, homeless guy. It makes me cringe, because, like, every second he's on yeah. screen. I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know. If it was the writer, director, actor, or all three. And so they talk about those shoes he's got on. You know, pretty weird. They want these shoes. Nate, have you, have you, uh, uh fallen a bit of good fortune? <laughs> of course you would share it with a friend. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, very, oh, very oh, whimsical and wacky. shoes, they look like they were made in the old country. Hmm. A little <laughs> snug, I must say. I'd be more than happy to take them away. Life off. will okay. No, I like them very much, and I think they would fit very well on my feet, yes, 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 yes. Then he looks in the mirror, and this is a cool scene, but he's like, this is not Dane's first time, you know, being his shoes. These are not the next person that have worn these shoes. He's been through this at least a couple of times before, where a new body he's inside of. So he looks in the mirror to just examine his face to see for the first time, like, oh, who am I this time? So I actually, I almost feel like maybe what this episode should have done is just like, at the end, had like some sort of just montage where you go back to like scenes in the episode and it makes sense to the viewer. That would not be good. No, where you just like flashed back. No, that would not be good at all. That's like, that's like That's if, a terrible idea. That's like if in A Nice Place to Visit, they ended it with a montage of all the scenes where Pip something says something that indicates that he's in hell. Yeah, yeah, that would not be good. He leaves his friends. He's acting like a tough guy. He's like, get your hands off of me. And so he goes, yeah, he goes into this fancy hotel. Enters a room and he finds this woman. So the woman is like, oh, hey, Dane, it's... <gasps> Who are you? You are not Dane! And then he, like, he goes over to the bar, best bar scene, and, like, takes it and drink. And he's like, that's Dane's bottle. He's like, I don't know. That's why I'm drinking it. And then he's like, Dane is gonna kill you if he sees you. And then he's like, shut up, Wilma, or something. He doesn't say that, but like he reveals that he knows her name is Wilma. And she's like, oh, heck. Yeah. And so he goes into a room and like, like, you know, gets like clothes and stuff. This is just not really very interesting. None of this. When he's, just when he's like whole... going around and like looking for things. Yeah. There's, a, there's a bit of him just sort of I mean, he does around. like, it's like, like, it makes sense what he's doing, but like, Honestly, what we could have done is we could have, like, had him go in, we could have had, um, like, he doesn't, we could have had, like, ten seconds of clothes, ten seconds of guns, ten seconds of shaving. 
outside of the part where he takes off his shoes and then puts them back on, is there anything in this entire scene that's important? I mean, he's getting that guns. He's, he's getting a gun, yes. He does get a gun from the drawer. He knows exactly where it is. That's important. We set up the thing about tequila and the lump of sugar, I guess, which is not... I mean, we don't need that. He could just go to the bar and say that, and then the audience would understand. Mm -hmm. It's not boring, but it's like, yeah. we don't really need to be spending this much time here. I mean, here the only part that you guys need to hear, haha. Ha. No, we're gonna give... We're gonna go We're gonna tell the you thing. the only important We're gonna part. go step uh, by step, Zach. Uh, so he finds a gun, right? So then he shaves. Wilma calls Bernie, looking for Dane. Bernie does not know where Dane is. So then at one point, you know, after he's done uh, shaving, Dane, um, or not, sorry, Nate. But Nate Dane. slash Dane. We can call him Nate for short. Or Dane. <laughs> yeah, I like Nate. So Nate, he takes off his shoes, and then he freaks out. He's like, what the heck? Why am I here? It's cool. Because we... Sort of the whole idea of the episode is that Dane's. Is that Dane is possessing Dane's, Nate through Dane, his shoes. Dane's <laughs> shoes contain his soul. So great. Yeah. Uh, you know, we could have had a little more explanation. No, we. Actually, I think if we had any more explanation, it would be so bad. What's great is that they don't explain. So we take it off his shoes, and then he's like, Whoa, I'm just old, homeless Nate. What am I doing here? And then he tries to leave, and then she has a gun. And then, and then he calls her lady, so now we really know that he has no idea what's right, going on. Right, he doesn't call her Wilma. Well, and then he's like, I don't know where Dane is. I don't know who that dude is. And then he's like, oh, he just found these shoes somewhere. Because, because he was like, well, you must know. How do you have those shoes? And he's like, well, just found them somewhere. So then he's putting on his shoes. And then, wait a minute. Yeah, oh, he I'm doesn't back put on his shoes and leave. And then he's like, oop, I'm Dane. Dane. Hi, my name is Dane. He takes a gun. Make me a drink. Um, yeah, oh, I just, yeah. What? Respect the woman. <laughs> Is that a problem with the episode? Uh, no! It's not, no! It's not a problem with the episode, but it's a little distracting. Okay. It distracts me from the point of thinking, like, so don't fly in 2018. Well, he's a character. What are you gonna do? I suppose. Make all characters good? Hmm. Hmm. Are you gonna cut out the part in the shelter where he's like, ah, foreigners? No, but like that, yeah, that feels a little like, like the point of that is that that guy's being a xenophobe, right? This and is the just point part of this of does not feel like he's being a sexist. Okay. So then it's later, and then Wilma's like about to pick up the phone, but then like she hears him coming, and then he's like in Dane's clothes, and he's like, "Where's that drink?" So then she makes him a drink. He asks for tequila. With a cube of sugar. <laughs> He's like, Dane's coming back. And then he just goes up to her for some reason and kisses her because he's Dane, I guess. And then yeah. she's like, and then she's like, oh, wait a minute. It's Dane. No, she's like, Dane, Dane, Dane. Oh, you're not Dane. Blech. I feel like that's kind of a cool <laughs> moment. <laughs> it's a cool moment. Like, she... <laughs> It's a cool moment that she's like, oh, this is a random guy kissing me. But then she's like, wait a minute. She can tell from the way he kisses, whoa, this is my husband or boyfriend, Dane. But then she's like, wait a minute. This is clearly not Dane. And then he slaps her as he yeah, did. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's, that's how you deal with women. That's why you uh, are crying. Yeah, that's how you deal with crying women who want their husband to come home if you're, like, their husband's dead soul that's being for that. Like, <laughs> oh, my wife, she wants me to come home. Let's smack her. <laughs> do you agree well, what are that? you gonna do? You're gonna be like, hey, um... It's okay. It's me. I'm Dane. Yeah. Well, I guess you could just not smack her. Yeah. Is it, yeah, this is a little like, he just, he was just like, quite he just sort of felt like he was like, ah, yeah. might as well, I've never been able to do this before because I've been married to her. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. And then like, she doesn't care that like, he's married to her, right? <laughs> This is when it's just like, oh, Wilma, please, just shoot him. So then, he's like, I have some unfinished business, and then he leaves, fade to black. So then we come up, and uh, Bernie is in a, a bar, and there's some cool jazz piano going on. Name comes up, and he's like, hey, bartender! I like tequila! 
with a cube of sugar. Because That's my guess, dad used to Because <laughs> he wants Bernie to hear him. So then Bernie asks everyone at the table, Hey, you know this weird dude who's talking really loud? And they're like, no. And so then the bar, and then he's staring at uh, Bernie, and the bartender's like, I wouldn't, I don't remember what he sounded like. But basically Bernie's sitting with like some Someone. attractive young widow with furs. <laughs> and the bartender's like, I, I advise you not to uh, stare at his woman. And he's like, I'm not staring at her. And then she has uh, one of my... Oh, this is what I was talking about before. Best character. My character. Uh, what is her one line that she delivers? <laughs> it's just a funny... <laughs> what is that? Don't just stare at him. Uh, he is, uh, either invite him or make him leave or something. So then Bernie gets his minion, Ben, to invite Nate over. My man, Ben. Brings Nain over. Bernie's like, yeah, you yeah, have a drink that a friend of mine used to order as well. Nain's like, I'm a messenger. My name's Mr. Kilroy, and I must deliver a message in private. I can't say who it's from. So then they go to, uh, to, uh, what's his face, is Bernie's office. And then they, they pat him down. Ben takes a gun. Happy Easter! And then, uh... Okay, here's what makes no sense. Is, so what is, what is Dane's goal? Is Dane trying to kill Bernie? That's something I would like to Because, like, if Dane's trying to kill Bernie, he could have walked into that bar, bam, bam, rip Bernie. That's such a great question. What, what is, is he Dane trying to do? trying to do? Is he trying to kill Bernie? Or is he trying to make Bernie feel remorse so, for his actions? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> or is he trying to, like, That's such a good point. Is he trying to disgrace Bernie? Is he trying to put Bernie out of business? Because just, like... Bernie... Okay. Name... Says he wants to get revenge on Bernie for killing him. He wants to kill him. Well, he, here's he, why he wants to kill him. Want, how do you know? Because he takes out a gun of his sock when he's talking to, to, to Bernie. The reason he doesn't want to just come into the bar and shoot him is because he wants to... Be like, this is revenge from day. Yeah, he wants to let him know that he's like a ghost inside a homeless man's body. But here's the thought, right? Uh, as soon as Bernie sees the shoes and the tequila with the lump, tequila with the lump of sugar, <gasps> bam, boom. The shoes and the lump of sugar ordering was not part of his like revenge strategy, in terms of like making Bernie realize the reason he has the shoes is because that's a whole mechanism, and the reason he orders the drink is so that Bernie can hear him and think of the other guy. Yes. And then he, but if he's like. I would like to give up with all of her mom. And then Bernie's like, oh, are you Dane? And then he's like, uh, or, or what about... He never asked if he was Dane, though. What if he walked into the bar, yelled, this is for Dane, and then shot Bernie four times? <laughs> no, but there's something about when he describes the murder and describes the circumstances of the murder, sort of lets him know, not only is it for Dane, that would just make him sound like he's one of, like, like he's Dane's brother or Dane's minion or something. He's like, no, he's like, wants to let him know that he is Dane. But like, why? <laughs> I don't know. This is cool just make to Bernie feel bad. Personally. Like, this, this makes very little sense. Here's another thought. Hello, police. I'd like to report a murder. Yeah. And, but and it's not the, as cool that and way. And then the police come, and then the police throw Bernie in jail, and then Nane visits Bernie in jail, and he's like, Hi, Bernie. It's Dane. You fricked up. So Ben's like, Happy Easter. Pulls out the gun that, um... That Dane, that Nane was hiding in his pants, and then, <laughs> and then Nane was like, ten anime hiding spots." <laughs> Nane is like, "Just tell the Easter Bunny here to give me back my gun when we're done." So then Baldman and Ben leave. Baldman is another one of like um, Bernie's people. And he's like, "Oh, Bernie, how did you get it clean so fast? The blood on your rug." <gasps> and then, uh, and then then Nate. Or Nane, Nane talks about, like, the backstory of how Bernie and Dane were, like, crime bosses, but then Bernie wanted to have more power, so he tried to give him money to quit the crime business, but then Dane wouldn't accept it, so Bernie shot him. Oh, my God. And then, and then presumably the thing is, maybe no one else had known this backstory, so, like, it has to be Dane, I don't know. So then Dane is like, oh, I told you I'm a messenger. Well, here's the message. Pulls out a gun from his foot. Baldman jumps out and shoots at him, but no, he doesn't. He's about to, but then Nate goes around and kills him, and he's like, oh, you thought you could do that a second time, because that's how they killed Dane, I guess. And then he's about to shoot Bernie, but then Ben is, like, behind books, and he kills Nate. Ah! Nane. Nane. There was enough time to shoot uh, Bernie, right? You're saying, you're saying, 
You're saying before shooting Baldwin? You're saying he's gonna die anyway, so yeah, he like, he really doesn't again. care about dying. He wants to kill Birdie, but look, the dude just died, and now he's back to life. Don't you want to stay alive? Don't you want to continue living the rest of your life? Start over where you're not a crime boss? Yes, you don't want to just die. You don't want to, like, be lame at staying alive just because you want to kill this guy. You can protect your own life while killing Bernie. That's what he wants to do. Because he just died. He wants to keep living. But if he wanted to protect his own life while killing Bernie, he could have said, This is for Dane! Bam! Nobody else wants Bernie to know. Okay. Bernie to know that this is literally from Dane. But here's the thought, right? He goes. He's like, I'm a Who? messenger. Okay, Dane. Dane goes. He's like, I'm a messenger. This is my message. Bam! Bam! And then... Bam, bam, ow, oh, Nain is dead on the floor. Yeah. And then Ben's like, I suppose I'm the new crime boss now. And so Ben dumps Nain's body in the alley. And then we got a new Nain, who lives out the life. So you're saying Nain that, are you saying that Dane knows that they're gonna dump his body in that exact alley a second no, time? No, Dane knows, knows that they're he's going gonna to dump his life. body in a way that he's going to come back to life. He doesn't know that. Even when you're in the moment and a guy's coming out and shooting at you, you're not thinking... I'm a reanimated guy and I'll get reanimated again. Your well, just, your, clearly, your human instinct kicks he in and you're like, this through, no? yeah, but that doesn't mean that in the moment you remember that you're not Dane. No well, matter if you have a plan, you're gonna shoot whoever's about to shoot at you just because you're a human. That's what you do. Okay. Nain is on the ground and he says, "I'll be back, Bernie. I'll keep coming back until I get my friend or until I get you." And then Ben's like, "Who is he?" And Bernie's like, it's di- I don't know. <gasps> and then they dump the body again in a similar sequence to the beginning. And then the annoying British man sees the this body. This is what I feel like should have been like, yeah, we- uh... It's like, what if you didn't do this? What if you just axed the, axed the British Use guy? Use the other homeless dumped, man. What if you just- There's a second homeless man. What if you just normal. dumped the body in a different place and had a homeless guy we haven't seen before find it? No, but, but it's nice. Uh, now, in the- uh, I mean, it doesn't make sense, but in the context of watching a television episode, it's nice to have that symmetry. And also the idea of, oh, I want these screws at the beginning, now I'm getting them again for my well, friend. Yeah, British guy but you could have done that with the other guy instead of the British guy. Clearly, Bernie takes more precautions than dumping bodies in the same place twice. And then, and then, to end the episode with the British guy going, Oh, well, Nathan, you really got smashed this time. Not sure if he genuinely thinks he's drunk or passed out, or if he realizes that he's been murdered and is making a joke. Takes his shoes, and then that's the end. And it leaves you with such a sour taste in your mouth. Definitely. We watched this episode twice because we had camera difficulty, and I appreciated it a little more the second time. The first time, I remember it was quite incomprehensible. It was what was going on. Here, after seeing it, a, a first time, or technically it was my second time. Now it's like, it's cool because what's great is, it doesn't, there is no expository dialogue. It doesn't telegraph to you exactly yeah, what's going on. Actually, There's a lot of silence, and I really appreciate that. What I really like is the first line in the movie is, okay, dump him. And then the second line is, meet Nathan Edward Bledsoe, 36. <laughs> right. And you learn, you you know exactly about all about him before God comes in. Yeah, I like that they don't have to rely too heavily on dialogue. They tell a cool story. It's interesting. His motivations. I think I yeah. determined that I like them. You are a little sketchy on the way he accomplished his plan. I think generally it's good. They, I mean, this whole part in the in the okay. hotel room is a bit long. It's good. It's a bit padded. There is a lot of cool things you could do with this. But you spent half the episode of just him walking around this apartment looking tough, you know? It's like, I feel like you could be doing more with it. The British man. It's hard to watch, and Wilma is hard to really watch. Really hard to watch. Wilma, for me, isn't hard to watch. Wilma is the weakest character we've ever encountered. Like, such a bad character. Why? She has no idea what's going on. That. She, she doesn't immediately jump to the conclusion that his dead no, body she... soul was carried on through his shoes no, and it's possessing no, 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 no. the homeless man? No, 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 no. <laughs> She has no idea that, um, Dane is involved in organized crime. And you can she tell probably that- Probably. No. Yeah, she must know. I feel like she would have come to the conclusion that, like, Dane has been murdered when, like, this guy walks in wearing Dane's shoes. Right. So she must not know. But then why is it unrealistic that she doesn't know? 
It's not unrealistic, it's just, like, she's the weak broad who has no idea what's going on. Yeah. One cool thing that I didn't pick up on the first time is, you have no idea if, um, uh, Nate is the first guy to get possessed. Yeah, that's what's cool. Well, I think it's sort of, you sort of can tell that he's done this before. Because well, yes, there isn't the, the thing in the beginning, and also what's great about that is you don't know the thing of the beginning of the Twilight Zone where it's like, What? What? I'm alive? And then he has to have that discovery yes. before and then, and then, the plot. He just gets and then he goes it because he, he understands yeah. what's going on. Like, it would be worse if like we had a whole scene where he was like, Oh my god, I thought I had been murdered by Bernie, the former I am not boss. Exactly. I am Dane, his former partner, and he murdered me because he wanted right. to be the biggest in the trade. I am Dane. Wait, how did this happen? I am clearly not dead. Oh, but perhaps it was the shoes. Oh, the shoes. Yeah, That's exactly. what it was. Yeah. I feel like the first time we were watching this episode, we were not expecting to give ratings above five, and I think this definitely both of us will. Yeah, because for that one, it was just incomprehensible. I wonder how many cool. episodes to us that seemed completely incoherent are actually kind of decent. I'm not going to wa watch all the bad ones again. Yeah, we should watch I'm not. Them. It's no, not no, like I'm going to watch Mr. Dingle the Strong again and be like, this is really good. But we also do have to take um, in mind that most people would see this episode once. Well, we don't really have to take that into consideration yeah. with our rating because we just have to do what our experience was watching the episode. Our experience mm -hmm. was, I mean, it was a special circumstance that we're doing a Twilight Zone review show and we were forced to watch it a second time because the camera broke, but, you know, I don't know. I'm just going to rate it the only way I know how. Six and a half. Huzzah! Seven! Whoa! Rating split! Rating split! Ratings, ratings, rating split! Oh, sorry, I just improvised. Well, see you next week when we discuss the hunt.